Welcome to Fireside Giants, my name is Alex, with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we wanted to bring you a really cool feature that we wanted to build upon just this film session with John Ross, but instead of just a film session, it's films, highlights, and lowlights that we're gonna be breaking down, um, taking a look at, because John Ross is such an intriguing player. Obviously, his speed is the primary factor that he brings to the Giants offense. It seems like they wanna get a little bit more explosive, um, a little bit more of a downfield approach to toward their offense moving forward with Jason Garrett, which is exactly opposite of what they did last year, you know, averaging 17.5 points per game and kind of just force feeding Evan Ingram on curl and hooks. Uh, so we want to see what the Giants are going to do with John Ross, how Cincinnati used him and what his strengths and weaknesses are. Um, but I'm really excited to dive into John Ross and, you know, what he could potentially be for Big Blue. But Anthony, my friend, before we dive into John Ross, how are you doing today? I'm doing real good. I actually really like this signing by the Giants. Low cost, you know, just about a million dollars. I think it's a $1.85 million cap hit, if I'm not mistaken, for John Ross. It's a one-year deal with the Giants. Um, really high ceiling player and low risk, high reward kind of deal here. You know, low money, um, but this is a guy who could step onto the field, compete for that wide receiver four, maybe even wide receiver three position and really provide a lot to your offense in terms of being a vertical threat. And the Giants really lacked the vertical threat last season. Granted, the Giants lacked the vertical passing concept anywhere in their playbook for the majority of the season, but it appears like they're going to move into a more vertical passing uh, offense in 2021 because of the fact that Freddie Kitchens is now a senior offensive assistant with the Giants. He moved into a new role. He's no longer the tight ends coach. So I think that's really interesting. And if you remember back to the Cleveland Browns game in 2020, when Freddie Kitchens was calling plays while Jason Garrett had COVID, um, the Giants offense was a lot more vertical. We had like a higher percentage of vertical shots taken. Like there were just more vertical route concepts on the field. So I think that Freddie Kitchens influence is going to be felt on the offense in 2021. And I think it already is being felt by the signing of John Ross. I think that's the connection you can make that the Giants do plan on having a more high octane, higher speed, and more vertical offense going forward. And I, I really like the the role that John Ross could potentially play in an offense like that. Exactly. And he's only going to count $1.8 million against the cap. It was a one-year $2.5 million signing, $500,000 guaranteed. It's a low-cost signing, low-risk, high-reward. That's exactly what we want to see. Right, Anthony? Low-risk, high-reward. That's what the Giants should be doing. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's that's what you want. You don't want to take high risks and screw yourself over if it doesn't work out, but you want to take a low risk and have the opportunity for a really, really high opportunity or um, high reward where somebody breaks out and you get a lot out of a lot of bang for your buck. That's basically what you should be looking for in free agency, in my opinion. Exactly. And he had, he had seven touchdowns in 2018. He's actually a pretty decent red zone threat, um, which is exciting because the Giants really didn't get much going in terms of uh, wide receiver production in the red zone, or really wide receiver touchdowns at all. So I think this is going to be good for the Giants. And he, one thing you'll see in his film is that cornerbacks are terrified of his speed. You'll see very early on, most of these clips, if not all of them, are from 2019, his, his most recent really uh, good sample size of, of film. And you'll see cornerbacks, They the second he shows he's going, he's going downfield, they turn their backs and run. And it really, really opens up the comeback route. It really opens up back shoulder throws. Um, and the Giants see that on film, and I think he's going to be a very nice player for them um, as long as he can stay healthy. But there are some weaknesses and some pretty prevalent ones that we're going to take a look at in this film session, so we'll dive right into it. Right off the bat, you'll see him at the top of your screen. Actually, this one's a little bit different. He's running a wheel route on the opposite side. So this is actually really interesting. Across, He's going across the motion, number 11, just so you know for future videos. Andy Dalton targets him downfield, and he's wide open with his speed. You know, you can do so many things with a guy like John Ross. That's what gets me excited about him in the first place is that he's so versatile. You know, just the ability to use these sweep, you'll see him on those end around plays. And this could be a fake end round. This could be just a regular end round, but instead it's just a, end, a fake end round wheel. And, you know, the, the whole secondary follows uh, somebody else. And then he's wide open for an easy score. And, you know, he makes guys miss in the open field. That's what he does best. Um, and, I, and I like it. You know, he's very versatile with what he can do. You can get a lot, a lot of creativity with him. It's a little flea flicker. Um, it's nice. You know, this is a good trick play from Cincinnati, but it just shows that he can make guys miss in the open field. And the second he's he's beyond that defense, um, he, he's unstoppable, man. You really can't catch him. Yeah, I really like the play design. That's my main takeaway. It's a flea flicker. It's a, you know, jet sweep or fake jet sweep. And you got John Ross coming in motion, getting his speed out there. Um, it's a really good throw by Andy Dalton, puts it in the pocket of that zone. Um, really well done there. I think it's a cover two. I actually think it was a man defense that got busted by that jet sweep. So really good play design 
that's my main takeaway from this. Um, I'm not like overly impressed with anything that John Ross did on this play. He just kind of catches an easy pass and takes it in. He's got nice speed to get away from that first defender, and he's very quick. If you notice, you're going to notice throughout this video, he does make a lot of missed tackles after the catch. He does that pretty frequently, can make people miss, which is definitely a good trait. You know, that's something that the Giants need, somebody who can get make plays with the ball in their hands. So that's what I like from John Ross there. But really my main takeaway from this play is that it's an excellent play design by Cincinnati's offense. Exactly. And I really wanted to show this play, not because of what John Ross did specifically, but because of the versatility you have with a player like that. He draws so much attention because of the speed. And if you're look, if you're going to look at a little touch pass, a little jet sweep cross motion, um, it really opens up other players, it opens up the run game, it opens up play action, it, it causes uh, confusion for defenses. Um, and we saw that with Sterling Shepard, they love to use him on end arounds and whatnot. I know Evan Ingram, they did it a couple times. Um, he fumbled one of them against the Rams, but he did get a, a touchdown uh, later on against Dallas. So this is a player who is capable of doing things like that. You can get creative with him, and he opens up opportunities for others, which I really, really like about uh, John Ross. Now, this is just another one. He's pretty much just going straight. And this little out and up um, just kind of hints at the out. He pushes that cornerback outside. Um, he's on the top of your screen. You'll see it right here. So right now he's in the Z. He's in the Z spot. Actually, yeah, I think he is. Let me just double check. Yep. So he's he's in the Z spot right now. Uh, he's, he's the number one on the on the top of your screen. Right, so he's all the way up top, and he he just gives this corner and cornerbacks play off ball coverage on him. You cannot press him most of the time because he will burn you deep every single time if you press him. Um, he's pretty good again at beating press coverage with his speed, and you have to play off ball. He does a pretty good job of just kind of at the stem of his route, just kind of just leaning to the out, just trying to get this this cornerback to flip his hips outside. The cornerback just bites right there, and the second he bites, he just bolts off. You look at the creation the separation he creates right there. That's a good three yards he creates in the split second. That's the kind of speed that the Giants need on offense. Um, and and just it's a really bad angle by the safety. This is You're going to see uh, John Ross high points the ball, makes a nice catch, but this angle by the safety is atrocious. Yeah, I mean, that should have been an interception. <laughs> um, nice ball locating skills. You know, he tracks it, nice body control when he goes up there and makes this grab. Um, yeah, good out and up, you know, nothing too crazy on the route. Bad throw, should have been an interception, though, really. That's the main takeaway for that. That should have been a pick, but he does go up there. He tracks it, he grabs it, and he runs into the end zone. So it's a good play for him, you know, nice touchdown. John Ross definitely didn't give up on the play, didn't assume that it was an interception. He still went for it, made the play, and that's what you like to see. Um, but in terms of the route, um, if you could rewind it so I could see that. I want to take one last look at this route. Yeah, I think he does a good job getting the inside leverage on that corner. I think, you know, but I think the corner is playing it that way because <clears throat> he knows he has a safety help over top. It's actually pretty decent coverage by the corner. I don't think he gets burned or anything. I think that he just kind of sticks with him and is playing and sort of, a, you know, just letting that safety do his job. And then that safety absolutely fails at his job. It's a good catch by John Ross, you know, nice hands. Um, he catches it away from his body. It's not a body catch. I don't like body catchers, but Good, good catch, awesome touchdown play, um, but really just terrible, terrible coverage by that safety. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the, the gist of it. He just, you know, he outruns that corner, but the corner knows he has safety help over top. The safety just completely botches the play. Um, if you're a decent safety in the NFL, it's probably interception 10 out of 10 times. Um, but it just shows you John Ross does have that speed. He can separate. Um, the out and up did work. He did create that separation. And, and if there's a corner playing off ball coverage and they don't, they don't have that safety help, I mean, we, as we know, the Giants got plagued by um, man coverage last year. A lot of teams play cover one um, and cover zero. And a lot of times, if you have one safety and you're pushing go routes on the on the seams, um, really on the outside of the boundaries, one of those guys is going to be open. If you have Darius Slayton and John Ross on the outsides, and you have John Ross and Slayton going full tilt downfield on go routes or out and ups, whatever you want, um, and they're playing cover one and the safety has to commit to one side, one of them is going to get open for a long play. Play. that's that's kind of where i see this going with the giants it opens it up it forces defenses to play more cover two cover three which opens up the run game because there's less players stacking in the box so they really want to utilize that speed on the outside now we'll see if they get themselves another big time receiver like kenny galladay or if they draft a guy um which will even open up things even further but let's let's keep going with this film so i like this is this is probably one of my more favorite plays of this entire thing he's on the bottom of your screen 
Um, and, and again, you're going to see the cornerbacks playing off ball coverage, which I like, uh, you know, for, for John Ross specifically, because this opens up those, those deep out routes and, you know, those comeback routes. And you can see right here, he stems this to the inside. He kind of leans like you'll, you'll see right, right about he, so he, so right here, he turns on the jets and he starts to, he starts to angle inside to draw that, draw that cornerback towards the inside of the field. And the second that cornerback commits, he, he has such dangerous speed. That corner has no, he has no other, um, you know, idea. He has no other thing he can do, but just stack on top of him. He has to get over top of him and not let him blow the top off the defense. So he has to do that, which really opens up this deep out route um, for John Ross. And he just lowers his hips. He lowers his hips right there. And the quarterback just goes flying. And then you have a nice, you have a nice cushion of separation. That's a good five yards right there. And an easy completion for a nice 25 yard gain. I like this, this is probably one of my more, uh, favorite plays of, of this entire film session for John Ross because it shows you how much the cornerbacks have to actually watch that speed, have to, how they have to get over top of him to make sure he doesn't burn them deep. Um, but it also shows he can lower his hips and he can run some nice savvy routes. He's not a terrible route runner. That's the number one thing to understand here. He's not just a speed guy. He has some decent route running attributes. Problem is sometimes he's off balance. His, his, his speed kind of throws him off a little bit. You'll see a little bit later on. Um, he, sometimes he fumbles. He, like, he bumbles and fumbles. Um, and, and that's kind of where it concerns you a little bit. He kind of gets a little too ahead of himself because he's so fast, but he does have the ability to run some, some pretty nice routes. Yeah, I think this was a really nice route. It's also a really good throw by Andy Dalton. Shout out to Chicago Bears. He's probably going to be the starting quarterback there. Um, and yeah, I, I like how he makes this cut to the outside. I think it's a really nice break to the outside. Um, you know, I've talked about this in my film breakdowns that I did for wide receiver prospects. There's two ways that you can run an out route or an in route, right? You can run a speed cut or you can run a breakdown kind of cut. And he does a breakdown cut here and he chops his feet and he breaks down really, really nicely and turns. And he, he had all the leverage in the world on that corner. Like you mentioned, he broke inside and then kind of got that cornerback's hips flipped and then he was able to cross him over. So it's perfectly done. Again, you notice that the cornerback is scared of his speed. He's trying to get over the top, trying to prevent John Ross from burning him. And it opens things up as um, John Ross breaks it to the outside. So it's a really, really clean route. You know, I really like how he gets out of the break and he doesn't lose a step. Plus, he works back towards the football. He doesn't start drifting upfield. As I notice, he kind of does come back to the ball, which is good. That's what you want to see. So really nice route, nice play, and um, really good throw by Andy Dalton as well. That's exactly right. So I like this, I like this clip a lot. I think this shows – a lot of what he's capable of doing in terms of baiting cornerbacks into thinking he's going deep. You'll see another really, really, really nice double move um, later on where he he fakes a double move. Well, he puts a double move on him, and then he fakes the go route and comes back, and the cornerback is in no man's land. It's, it's really pretty. Um, but I also included some low lights in here so you could see some of those drop problems. I want to be unbiased with our coverage, obviously. Um, so you'll see that. And a couple of these drops are brutal. So, you know, just, just keep in mind, the highlights are nice and we're, we're taking a look at a couple of them right now, but there are some plays here where it's, it's not too good. So here, okay. So this is another, another little wide receiver screen. Just wanted to show a little bit more of the versatility he does bring to the game and what the giants could do to him, do, do with him. Um, I do like him as a player because of the versatility in the terms of you can use him on the go routes. You can use him as a wide receiver screen. You can use him as a kick returner. Um, you can do end, round, end arounds with him, you know, jet sweeps, touch passes. You can do so many things with a player like John Ross, who has 4 2 2 speed, broke Chris uh, Johnson's uh, record for a 4 2 4 in the 40 yard dash, 2017. The guy can freaking fly. And you, you see it. And this is just a seven yard gain, but he has a couple he has a couple steps here I'd like if he picked up a little bit more, but the blocking wasn't great. Um, they kind of stopped him a little bit short, but he picks up a nice little gain to get the first down. Yeah, the Giants need a guy that can make plays with the ball in their hand, get the ball, run, with, get some yardage after the catch, right? We need that. Um, so, yeah, that's not like a play to write home about. It's nothing super impressive, but it just shows that he has the experience catching screen passes, making plays with the ball in his hands. The Giants need that. They cut Golden Tate. Golden Tate kind of was their guy who was doing that. Um, maybe not in 2020, but definitely in 2019. We saw him take that screen to the house against the Jets. So the Giants definitely need a guy who's able to do this, and I think that they found that with John Ross. This is also a very, very, very nice play. So I'm just going to rewind for a second. So he is in, he is over here, the number two receiver. He's, they're playing a three by one. They have three on this side, one on this side. 
Um, and he's in the middle there and he's really, he's in press coverage, which again, if you're, if you're a team, honestly, think about the giants here. Think of, think of the outside. If the X is Sterling Shepard, that, that middle guy, that number two receiver is John Ross. And that inside slot guy is, is Evan Ingram. Think about this for a second. What the giants like to do is they would like to use that outside, the outside guy, let's say a Sterling Shepard, cross him over and then spray fade with John Ross to the boundary in man coverage. That's what they would like to do. Cause right now they're playing cover one. They would like to use John Ross on a spray fade, just bolt him up the sideline. Um, but you don't always need to do that. You know, that would be a Jason Garrett play. But in this situation, instead, he he really attacks that outside shoulder of the press corner and he just crosses his face and the, and the corner can't even get a hand on him because he's so quick. And he has a free, a free quick slant um, and he picks up like 35 yards on it. It's, it's really nice. So you see right out of the gate, he, he attacks that outside shoulder, bam, he's across. Nice little window, and there he goes. And he can he can make guys miss in the open field. You know that's what he's capable of doing. That is his strength, um, aside from speed. So I really like this little quick slant. He baits the, the he, he baits the spray fade, which the cornerback is probably expecting. But instead, he just crosses his face and hits him on the slant, and bam, right up the middle for thirty five yards. Yes, yeah, speed kills. As soon as he gets the ball in his hands, it's like he's shot out of a cannon. He's just got a ton of speed. And he goes and he makes a guy miss, you know, speed absolutely kills. And that's John Ross's game. And yeah, it's a really nice release off the line of scrimmage. He opens it up, cuts it inside. It's a sweet slant route. And then a ton of yardage after the catch, which you love to see. Like I just mentioned, the Giants don't really have a guy on the roster who does that. Now they do. John Ross is that guy. He's going to make plays with the ball in his hands after the catch. That's what John Ross is good at. And so that's why I really like this signing. I think that there's a lot to be done with him getting the ball in his hands, setting him up to where he can just run with it and make plays um, on the ground. Yep, exactly. And I like how he kind of uses a little hesitation um, out of the route just because the he wants to see what the cornerback's going to do. And he completely just he, – he just bolts. He, he gives him a little bit of a, a power uh, speed right to the outside shoulder, crosses his face for the slant. Um, that's what happens when people have to respect your speed. It allows you to get creative with your release package and, and how you attack them, you know, in coverage. So I liked this. This is very nice from him. Um, this is also a nice little play, but again, this is a nice play here, but I do want to mention one thing that I didn't like about it. Um, you'll see here he's at the, he's, he's playing in the Z spot. He's the, he's the number one receiver on the outside at the top of your screen. Um, but out of his break, he makes, he makes that cut to deep in and he stumbles, you know, he gets, he gets ahead of himself. He stumbles a little bit. He still makes the catch. Um, and he, I think he takes it for a nice gain, but I'd like it to be a little bit more fluid, a little bit more refined, a little bit more smooth. He's a little bit stumbly and jerky with the way that he goes about his route sometimes. And you'll see out of, out of his break right here, bam, he stumbles here a little bit and he still corrals the ball. But then, I mean, then it's all him. He takes it to the house. Like that's, that type of player, you're, you're trading sometimes not the best fundamentals for a guy who can who can turn a deep end into a into a home run play and beat two guys in coverage. You know, two safeties back there. It's incredible. The apex defender uh, bites on a little bit. And he, there's no there's no way he's stopping him once he gets past him. Yeah, again, you just see him make a ton of people miss after the catch. That's what the Giants need. They need a guy who can do that. Get the ball and make plays with the ball in their hands. You know, they don't have that right now on their roster. They have a couple of possession receivers. You know, Sterling Shepard can make some guys miss after the catch, but that's not primarily his game. He's more of a route runner, possession guy. Darius Slayton's more of a vertical guy. He catches the ball, and then that's kind of it. He doesn't really make people miss. Golden Tate was their guy. Now they have John Ross to be that guy. He's got a ton of speed. Speed absolutely kills. It is rare. You know, 4'2", 240, broke the record. We all know that about John Ross. He is incredible, um, incredibly fast at the very least. And so this is a really exciting signing for the Giants as you look at a boomer bust player. Um, did bust for the Cincinnati Bengals, was probably drafted a little too high from his impressive combine, but he still has that boom potential. Maybe he just needs a change of scenery. Maybe joining the Giants system is exactly what he needs. He'll get new opportunities, get the ball in his hands, make plays after the catch. That's what he's good at. Hopefully they play him to those strengths. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's uh, Let's take a look here. So, okay, so this is one of the, the one things I didn't like about him. He has concentration drops, lack of focus, lack of concentration. He's too ahead of himself. you got to catch these passes. You know, this is to design play for him, and he just drops it straight up. Just straight up drops it. So it's unfortunate, but it happens. 
Yeah, he's got some concentration drops. I noticed when I was watching him, and I, I think on this play, there's a combination of concentration. He's moving. He's trying to get the ball and go as soon as possible. Um, so I think that there is a concentration drop issue for John Ross, but I also think that and the more concerning issue is that he shies away from contact. I think that when he feels um, kind of naked, right, like when he's kind of no one around him, he's got his back turned, he doesn't see who's in front of him, he doesn't really like that. He kind of That's when his drops – start to happen because he knows that somebody's coming to hit him and he kind of shies away from that contact and it turns into a drop sometimes. That's what I've noticed with John Ross. And I think they had something to do with that on this play. I feel like he just didn't really put full effort into that catch, probably because he thought he was about to get hit. Um, I also think that there's just a lot of concentration issues for John Ross as well. Exactly. Exactly. And you're going to see on this play too, he, he, he just kind of feels he's not totally confident when the ball is coming his way right here, you got to catch that, you know, like if you're a receiver in the NFL, you got to catch that ball right after your fingertips. Um, you know, good, good, decent coverage, but he has, he has a second there to haul that ball and just take and just drop to the ground. Um, right off your hands, you know, if it hits you in the hands, you got to catch the ball. I think that's kind of a, a traditional rule in the NFL. Um, but this is a fumble. So the, the, the Buffalo bills really had his number in this game. But in another another con, sometimes he can be a little bit lazadaisical with the ball in his hands, not as protective as you'd want. Um, you know, Buffalo has their best corner on him all the time, of course, because he's really the number one receiver at the time. But just, you know, ball pops out. This is a turnover. He thinks it's down, but he got to hold on to the ball a little bit better. He Also, just keep in mind, he came in at with the, in the, ne- the ninth percentile when it, came, when it comes to wide receiver hand size. So he had one of the smallest hands. Uh, pair, of, pair of hands at the combine 2017 ninth percentile of all receivers so y- y- it, it can be an issue drops are an issue for guys who don't have big hands it bounces off his hands he has weak hands um that's probably the reason why he has some dropping issues yeah and you know i'm talking about how great he is after the catch and how the giants need a guy who can do things after the catch well part of that you don't want your guy whose primary job is to make plays after the catch to be fumbling the ball. So that's one concern that you can see there. He's got to be careful with the ball in terms of his drops, in terms of holding on to it while being hit, all of that stuff. So that's just my takeaway from that play. Yep. And this is a really, really, really nice route. You'll see him at the top of your screen, little stutter step. And that stutter step is beautiful because it baits the hell out of the cornerback. You'll see right, right. So right here, he lowers those hips to, to, to look like it's going to be a comeback or a little hook route, and that corner jumps forward a little bit, and then he takes off, and that cornerback has no choice but to turn on the Jets and run downfield. And what does that do for John Ross? It gives him all the leverage because now that cornerback is running. He's like, I'm going to get smoked right now. But instead, John Ross says, psych, I'm going to turn around and catch that ball with, with an easy separation. He has three yards right there, easy catch, 20 yards downfield. And, you know, it's it's really nice. That's what you want to see, how you utilize speed to uh, bait corners into making mistakes. He's at the top of the screen, so he's just going to run. Really nice route here. Um, I like how he really sells the go, right? This is this kind of reminds me of um, Jerry Judy at one point last season, his rookie season. He had a play where he was running um, on the right sideline. He was running a go route, um, or he was actually running a curl route, but he – went, put his hand up and kind of chopped and sold the go and then turned it around. Beautiful route by uh, Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy's already one of the best route runners in the NFL, in my opinion, despite being a rookie. Um, But John Ross kind of does something similar there when he's running this stem of the route. He kind of breaks down like he's going to bolt for that go route. And then he breaks it down once again and comes back. And he really gets the uh, corner on his heels, really gets that guy backpedaling um, and ends up making a really nice play here. Yeah, right there. And then he comes back. So uh, and he works back to the football. He doesn't wait for it to get to him. He, you could see him come back to the football, make a nice catch. He's definitely got those wide receiver instincts. You know, he attacks the ball. He high points it. He comes back to it. He's got all of that. But like I said, this is another oppor- This is another situation where you're seeing him where he knows where the defenders are around him and he knows where the ball is. So he has no reason to shy away from that contact. So I think that, you know, when you look at those drops, you're going to see the shy away from contact thing. But on a play like that, when he gets himself wide open, that's when he's a true threat because you know he's not going to drop because he knows where he is, knows he's got that separation. Really nice play. Yep, exactly. And here's another one. Nice little goal route. You know, it's kind of hitting the corner. It's kind of a corner route. And he makes, he makes a nice catch. You know, he's a, he's a very athletic guy. Obviously, he can make good catches. He can make those flashy ones that you want. Um but he drops a couple. You're going to see one in a second. That's a nice one, you know, with pretty tight coverage. I like that. 
And I think this one he drops, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or sorry, no, this is this is just a nice out route to the other side. Um, this is, I think the one right after this, he drops one downfield on the left boundary. But this is just a nice little out route. I like this. Nice little speed out, maybe Anthony would call it. Um, and bam, he's out there. He, he creates coverage. Of course, the cornerback has to bite because he thinks, you know, i got to maintain my distance. I can't let him get deep on the go route. He, they're giving him underneath routes most of the time because if they bite and he hit, and he hits the Jets upfield, they're screwed. You know, they're done. They're done. Yeah, nice speed out. Again, this is different from the other out route that we saw him run because that one, he broke it down. This one, he kind of just breaks real quick. Um, and that's kind of good with John Ross. You know, I like seeing him use his speed but not get out of control when using his speed. Um, this is that deep route again. Um, I like how he locates the ball here, the ball tracking skills. I mentioned that earlier, how he has those natural wide receiver instincts. Um, on that deep route, you can see him locate the ball over his shoulder and corral it in. I think that's really nice. And then on this out route, I like how he attacks the ball in the air, gets his feet in bounds. He's really got those natural wide receiver instincts. You know, he plucks the ball out of the air. He attacks the ball. He's got really, really good body control for a guy his size. Usually it's those larger, big body wide receivers. Those are the guys that you say, wow, great body control, really has a huge catch radius. Surprisingly, John Ross has some pretty good body control and has a pretty decent catch radius for a guy his size. So I think that's really impressive. So that really adds more to his repertoire, right? Really adds more to what the Giants can do with him. He's not just a guy that you throw screen passes to or just a guy you throw go routes to. You can trust him to catch some other passes and he can go there and pluck the ball out of the air on occasion. Like we saw against that, that one play against Seattle where the ball was deep. Um, and the safety made a terrible play, but he still went up there high point and it plucked it out of the air. So he really does have some pretty decent ball skills for a guy his size. Yeah, no, I agree. And this is just the last, the last clip of the, of the film study. Um, and you know, it, he, he really beats it. He wins this coverage. He stacks, he gets the cornerback on his, pretty much on his knees. Um, uh, but he just can't corral the catch. It's just those little, those small hands sometimes get, get the best of him. Um, and you know, it is what it is. He makes some flashy plays. If you get the ball in his hands and he doesn't fumble, he doesn't drop it. The guy's electric. You know, that's what the Giants are banking on, hopefully revitalizing that career. Um, in blue, in bid blue next season for just a $1.8 million cap hit. Super, super low risk, low financial commitment, and high reward. That's what they're looking for. And I like that the Giants went this route. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this latest film session for John Ross. Taking a look at some highlights, some low lights, some film study. Um, hope you learned this thing or two, saw what some of those things he will bring to the Giants are, um, and maybe if he can become that wide receiver three or four for the Giants, maybe battle with Darius Slayton for a starting position. Maybe even both of them will be on the field. We'll see what happens next season. Um, but guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the next video.